Martin. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Raymond. Okay, good. Can't see you yet. Okay. Okay. Make Raymond a co-host, guys. Oh yeah, you have. You should have a video button, Raymond, where you can push. Oh, okay. Just a minute. Yeah, oh, I've okay. seen, I think you're here. I think, yes, I've got you. Okay, is that better? Much better. Okay, I have, okay, this this situation is different than any I've seen before, and that's why I didn't know what to do. <laughs> that's all good. Great to see you on. Thanks for coming. Well, appreciate the invitation. How many people do we have? Oh, about, like six? about 35, 40 at the moment. Oh, that many? Okay. Yep, so we've got a few, so. Yeah, well, thanks for coming on, Raymond. So I'll just give everyone a nice introduction and just tell me, Raymond, if I speak too fast, okay? Am I speaking okay? Okay, well, don't get, don't get any faster and I think we'll be all right. Okay. Okay, everyone. So as I announced, my introduction to Raymond was somewhat interesting. I went to Virginia in 2014 and Raymond walks into the room wearing a cowboy hat, walked in with a hunting knife and a gun. And I remember coming from Australia where we don't really see people with guns. It was a, I had a good chuckle, but I loved it. And it changed my life. My knee got fixed. I learnt much. And I've been trying to get Raymond onto a webinar for some time. And Raymond doesn't like tech as much as face to face, but he's here and I'm very grateful. So Raymond, I'd love to just start by asking you the question like, yeah, look, one of the things that I know you first taught, taught at our workshop that really helped me was when you talked about just about energy and how energy is changing since 2001 and how much energy governs our life and we can actually change the energy and transform it. So maybe to start with sharing a bit about that. Okay. Um, Einstein is credited to making a quote saying, everything is energy, that's all there is to it. I think he was right. Um, so what I have learned a little bit over the years is how to use energy. Uh, you can call it transform it, you can call it manipulate it, you can call it maybe by a dozen other names, but uh, I found right here are the three principles of my work, that all things, including beliefs, thoughts, memories, and opinions are simply forms of energy. The intelligent human mind has the ability to direct energy. So direct is probably a better word than manipulate. Okay. Uh, second is energy is impressed upon matter. Third principle is energy follows thought. And all my work are based on those three simple principles. And what I found was over the years uh, with various methods and practice and mistakes and a, a lot of other things is that uh, we can improve the power or increase the power of our mind. And that is done by learning how to function with the brain frequency in the alpha frequency. So let me just uh, give some basics on this as I would do in a class. Yes, please. Whenever you were born, your brain was, and maybe a while before you were born, your brain was emitting charges of electricity fewer than three charges of electricity per second. As you got older, your brain frequency speeded up at various times in your life. At around the age of three, your brain speeded up a bit more. Now, up until that point, it was emitting fewer than three charges of electricity per second. At around the age of three, the brain started emitting more, uh, started working faster, sending up more charge of electricity. 
at the time you were born, this was called a delta, D-E-L-T-A frequency. And around the age of three, you speed it up a bit and you went into what is known as a theta, T-H-E-T-A, theta frequency. Then when you got about seven years old, uh, you grew a new set of teeth. There are certain physical characteristics that correspond to the brain frequency. At that time, your brain was speeding up again and you went into what is known as an alpha, A-L-P-H-A, alpha frequency. You stayed there for approximately seven years. Now, this, these changes did not happen overnight. They were gradual changes. But around the time that your body started physically developing into an adult, your brain speeded up again into what is known as a beta frequency. Okay, this is just the natural progression of the human brain, what we call it, the evolution of, of, of the brain. Now, for some reason, there are certain people, even though they become adult, still function predominantly in a lower brain frequency, the alpha frequency. Now, what I'm saying now, I am quoting from a fellow by the name of Jose Silva, who originated the Silva method of mind control. Jose uh, was a very intelligent man. I learned quite a bit from him. And uh, I really had a great deal of respect for him. And I was one of his lectures for about five years, uh, from about 1990 to 95. So during that time, I did learn a, a, a bit about the brain. Now, any hunch or guess or intuitive thought that you have, if you are in the beta frequency, which is the higher frequency, goes up to about 20 cycles per second, you have about a 20% chance of being correct. Any hunch, guess, or intuitive thought you have while in the alpha frequency, which is 10 cycles per second, is right at the center of the, of the uh, alpha frequency, you have about an 80% chance of being correct. So what this says simply is you can improve your intuitive abilities or your psychic ability from 20% to 80% by doing your thinking in a low brain frequency. Now, I'm going to uh, I'm not totally quoting Jose on this. Part of this is my terminology that I've come up with. But the, let's, let's um, address two words, energy and frequency. And this is greatly simplified, but frequency is the speed at which an element vibrates. For example, one atom of salt will vibrate at a different frequency than one atom of sulfur. An atom of gold will vibrate at a different frequency than an atom of lead or of silver or any other metal. Okay, uh, this is a bit for, uh, ahead of the game right now, but I want to mention it. I found that there was an ideal frequency for human bodies. Each race of people has their own specific frequency. Each species of animal has their own specific frequency as well as each species of plant. For example, an elephant will vibrate at a different frequency than a rabbit. A tomato plant will vibrate at a different frequency than an apple tree. Okay, so uh, I believe it was Nikola Tesla said that if you want to understand the universe, think in terms of energy and frequency. Well, I read that statement years after I was had discovered what I'm talking about now. So. The best way to add power to your thoughts is to think at a relaxed state of mind because stress cancels out relaxation. When a person is stressful, the brain frequency will go up. Whenever you're relaxed, it will go down. Okay. Now, the alpha frequency ranges from about seven uh, cycles per second to about 14 cycles per second. Now, I have read a little variation on this, but to me, it really doesn't make any difference. I just simply call it a relaxed state of mind. I really avoid scientific definitions. I keep everything real simple. So call it a relaxed state of mind. Now, 
Let's, let's make it a little simpler. Whenever you go to bed at night, unless you are, have something that really stresses you out, you're going to get somewhat relaxed. Your uh, blood pressure slows down, your heart slows down, and your brain waves slow down. When your brain waves drop into the alpha frequency is when you drift off to sleep. Every morning when you wake up, oh, let me say this first. You will go through four to six sleep cycles a night, depending on how long you sleep, where the brain will uh, go down into delta, which is a very deep sound sleep where you don't even hear your alarm clock uh, or you don't hear the phone ring. I mean, this is a real deep sleep. It's practically unconsciousness. Um, and then when it comes time to wake up in the morning, your brain will gradually come back up. Uh, whenever you reach about 14 cycles per second or thereabouts is where you wake up, you realize it's another day, time to get up. Now, normally if people will go through four to six sleep cycles a night, depending on how long they sleep, uh, where the brain will go uh, down into the delta frequency, then back up into the alpha frequency, where you do not, not necessarily wake up. Okay. Now, is all this really you know, that important in our work? No, it's just, I just wanted to explain a little bit about, about brain frequency. Now, please understand, I do not claim to be an authority on brain frequency. Most of what I've said, I learned from Jose Silva who, in my opinion, was an authority on brain frequency. Now, what we have learned is that the power of thought lies in low brain frequency. So there is, you have much more power with your thoughts if you're in an alpha frequency than you do in a beta frequency. That is what's important. It's important that whenever you have something very important to think about, do so while at a relaxed state of mind, which is nothing more than the alpha frequency. That is how I can do things that most people don't do. Uh, it's because I have practiced for 47 years thinking at a lower brain frequency. So there's really not any great mystery to this. It's just really fairly simple. Uh, and I like to make it simple. So uh, let me stop here and ask question anything I said, if you like, or on to another subject, whatever you'd like to do. I think the what you said there was perfect, Raymond. Like, I remember how you explained the delta was going fast asleep virtually. The theta is when you were half asleep, half awake. The alpha is like that very relaxed state of mind. And I remember as well, when I was at your workshop, you said a very good time to do affirmations or any kind of mental programming is when you're in a deep alpha state and the lower the better. So before going to bed at night or during deep meditation, is that pretty much correct? Yes, um, but this alpha frequency is not some mysterious realm off in another, in another dimension. It is simply a lowering of brain frequency. That's all it is, in which we have the ability to reach practically instantly. Now, uh, there was some research done at Ozark Research Institute several years ago on brain frequency and dowsing. Uh, and what they found was that dowsers, uh, the better dowsers, were functioning in the alpha brain frequency. Now, what I did, I programmed myself that every time I pick up a pendulum, my brain automatically goes into the alpha brain frequency, even though I'm driving down the road at 140 kilometers. It's, um, it's just something that we can do for ourselves. Uh, so there's something else I wanted to say and this is an opinion. I try to separate what I believe are facts from what are my opinions. And my I believe my opinions are right, but I cannot prove that. And that is if every, uh, let me say it this way. Jose Silva said there was a band of energy around the earth out about the ionosphere that pulsated at 10 cycles per second. 
Well, I got to thinking about that. So I'm inclined to think that there is a force in the universe, actually out about the ionosphere, that has this vibration. I would call this a creative force. That's my opinion of it. And whenever we have our brain at the alpha frequency, 10 cycles per second, that, that's the pulsation of this, of this energy field, which is the center of the alpha frequency. Whenever we have our brain emitting 10 charges of electricity per second, then we are have synchronized with what I would call creative energy, what the Indians would call the great spirit, what religious people would call God. That is my opinion, is what we're doing. And that is why we have much more power to our thoughts than we would at any other frequency. So I hope that makes sense. It does. No, perfect. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, in terms of doing affirmations and things like that, do you recommend, I know what you used to say was to go to bed just before bed to do your affirmations just as you go to bed and just as you wake up. Yes, and I still do that um, every, every night and every morning. Now, as far as affirmations go, uh, my observation of people is that they use far more words than are necessary. <laughs> and in my opinion, more you, words you use, the less effective you are. And I run into this because a lot of people ask for help with affirmations and they want to write some long detailed uh, essay. They're wasting their time. It's probably not going to work. The brain does not like a lot of complicated words. Uh, brain doesn't like uh, all the details and the ifs, whys, buts and all that. Basically, put your affirmations in as few words as possible that state what you wish to accomplish. And let's make it real easy. Whatever you wish to accomplish, just give thanks for it. It's that simple. For example, I give thanks for good health, a good family, good place to live. I grow my own, most of my own food. I give thanks for a garden. I have a water source, a spring in the backyard. I give thanks for the water. As a matter of fact, what we can do today, if you like, I don't know if it's too advanced for the folks or not, but we might could uh, give everybody some good drinking water today. Uh, so um, I'll kind of let you guide that one, which which way you want this uh, conversation to go, because I'm kind of working for you and the other folks out there today. Uh, but um, I think that's all I need to say. What, what happens, oh, uh, back to affirmation. Sometimes I warn, the way my mind works, I got a one track mind. And if I get thrown off on it, I have to start all over again. And sometimes when we're talking, I will get off on another subject. I will do it unintentionally myself. And then you have to bring me back and say, tell me what we were talking about. That's just, that's just the way, the way my mind works. It works differently than, than most humans. Um, and that's probably why I can uh, change the taste of water around the world. It's just um, I block out everything else and just fo focus on what I want to do. But as far as affirmations, uh, avoid the words not and don't. Because, uh, so for example, a terrible affirmation is, I don't want to get sick. Avoid, avoid terminologies like this. Human beings really cause a lot of their own problems by the way they think and the way they talk. So you think and talk about what you want, not what you don't want. That's the first rule of success is think of what you want instead of what you don't want. Because the brain doesn't seem to determine what's good for you and what's not good for you. Uh, it kind of does whatever you programmed it to do. Now, I know I've been observing people all my life. And back as a kid, which was a long time ago, I listened to people in the community and at church and almost invariably they talked about negative stuff. 
and they work they use the um phrase i am afraid in a, a lot of the conversation for example uh, i'm afraid my whole car is going to break down uh, i'm afraid i may have a flat tar uh, i'm afraid i'm going to catch the flu i'm afraid it's not going to rain enough to water the garden if it rains i'm afraid it's going to rain too much the word i'm afraid was woven into the conversation this is a terrible idea so it uh as i remember all these things i i tell anybody that wants to listen uh, eliminate i'm afraid from your vocabulary um so, uh and right now i don't want to get too deep into this but right now is a good time to say that fear is being used more in advertising now than it probably ever has been. I, I'm, I'm no authority on, on the virus. I don't even want to get into it, but I'm going to say this. There has been nothing ever advertised as much as the coronavirus. It is advertised continually on the news. What are they doing? It's using fear. And people who have fear are easier to control. So it's a plan. Unfortunately, it's working. So uh, I like to wake people up to things like this. Uh, so my first advice on this, if you want my advice is, stop watching the news. I did. Uh, I only see sketches of it if I happen to walk through the house, but do I actually watch it and listen to it? No. Uh, why? Well, first off, I don't believe it. Uh, and it doesn't make me happy. So one of the simple rules to stay healthy is don't dwell on things that make you unhappy. It, I have a lot of my clients have problems. That's why I have clients. If, if they didn't have problems, they wouldn't need me. Um, so I always tell them, tell me how I can help you in one sentence. I do not want your drama. I won't listen to it. I don't really care when you were in the hospital. I don't care what your doctor said. Tell me in one sentence, how do you hope I can help you? And if you can't do that, please contact someone else who is willing to listen. I'm not. What I find is, Warren, is most healers are sick. Not only that, a lot of them live in haunted houses. It's like they've spent their life fixing the general public and all the clients, but they never take care of themselves. So I have one hard and fast rule. Actually, I've probably got several, but this is among them. Main one is I will do my best to be kind to you. I will help you if I can. I will not let your problem become mine. Brilliant. And that is why that I don't let people drag me down. So I don't know how many healers we've got out there listening, but if nobody's told you that before, uh, that's why I'm telling you now. Uh, it's just that healers have a lot of sympathy and they feel so sorry for people well i wish people were in better shape than what they are and i will give whatever advice or energy i can to help them to improve but one of the best things you can do is remove i'm sorry from your vocabulary it is a very disempowering state i tell people if i happen to bump into you at the grocery store and knock something out of your hand i'll reach down pick it up and hand it back to you and say excuse me i will not say i'm sorry love it if you call and your dog got run over by a truck i will not tell you i'm sorry it's a matter of what i call self-empowerment and if you want to be empowered you got to do it yourself because nobody's going to do it for you So go ahead, Warren, where's, where's the next step? Where, where are we going next? Oh, look, I love that. That just reminded me, like, I remember you always used to say that you never allowed toxic energy into your life. And you basically, yeah, you didn't take on problems. 
the one question that I was going to ask you that came out of that, Raymond, based on what a few asked me here, is when you said you programmed yourself using the pendulum, but every mm -hmm. time you pick up the pendulum, you go to an alpha state. Can you share a little bit about how you did that? How you programmed yourself? It's so that you've already told it, Warren. There's nothing complicated about it. A program is nothing more than an intent. Now, one of the best ways to program yourself, if you need it more than once, is to repeat something while at a relaxed state of mind. So uh, that, and you are really brainwashing yourself. Programming is nothing more than brainwashing yourself. That's all it is. Yeah. And we have the ability to do that. Um, so I just uh, did nothing more than say, every time I pick up this pendulum, I am going to reach the alpha brain frequency. And that was all there was to it. See, all of my teachings, work, everything is so simple. The biggest thing I found wrong is that people like to complicate things. They think the more words they put in it, the more effective it will be. The opposite is true. Uh, so I will say this, the more times that you repeat something to yourself mentally, the stronger your programming will get. Uh, I used to program myself while driving to work every morning. I was alone, so I could just go through a whole list of what I wanted to do while I was driving. And it's, um, well, it just, it just comes down to brainwashing ourselves. Any, okay, let me say it this way. Maybe this will help. Any information received while at a lower brain frequency will make a deeper impression upon the brain cells. Whatever makes a deeper impression upon the brain cells becomes a part of our subconscious mind. Whatever becomes a part of our subconscious mind becomes our belief system. And our belief system is the dominant factor that controls everything that happens to us. And we have the ability to change our belief system. So what I have done with dowsing, and I do this with practically every one of my clients, I find out what they believe. Most of them don't realize what they believe. So let me just give you just a, one or two examples here. I find that the majority of people believe that they deserve to suffer. Now I would blame that on religion for the most part, because for whatever reason, well, the reason is control, but a lot of folks have been taught that the more they suffer, the better person they are. I don't believe this stuff at all. I think this is simply a way to control people and it's been used for centuries and it works. Uh, the, also guilt and shame is something else used to control people. Poverty is another one. Uh, it's like um, get them to give their money away and uh, keep them broke. And actually, to put it quite bluntly, it's keep them broke and keep them dumb and you can control them. And it is a method that's been used for at least 2000 years, probably a lot longer than that. Keep them broke and keep them dumb. Don't let people think outside the box. Just tell them what to think. That's the world we've lived in for years. And every now and then some maverick like me escapes and says, hey, we don't have to do it any longer. Love so um, I had a motto back when I was 15 years old. It said, there is no substitute for freedom. I still have the same motto. So whenever I work with people that are seriously interested in doing something, I like to help them achieve freedom. Why? Because it's one of the few things I actually believe in. People ask me sometimes, what do you believe in? I said, well, I believe in kindness and I believe in freedom. That's pretty much it. That's at least the top of the list. So um, 
let's see what else uh, do you need to know? Oh, yes, let's do this. Um, see, we were programmed as kids by people who had no idea what the word programming meant. I lived, I grew up in a world that had no idea, they never heard of the word brainwashing. I'm a product of the Appalachian Mountains, and those of you in the United States will understand about where this is. People in foreign countries probably won't, but it's, uh, it's a long string of mountains running uh, down through the, the eastern United States. And it's uh, basically what we call backwoods people that lived here. And that's just the background that I came from uh, for the most part. Now, um, one line of the family goes back. I am the 22nd great grandson of Robert the Bruce, the King of Scotland. But then again, when you go back 700 years, you're related to an awfully lot of people. Uh, so um, we're all a product of our heritage and our environment. And I, I, I explain this to people. This is why beagle dogs chase rabbits and bird dogs point quail. They're a product of their ancestors. Well, we all are. That's why we have our different characteristics. Uh, and now what I've learned is to a degree is that we have the ability to neutralize, that means take energy away from or make, make uh, not effective. We have the ability to neutralize a negative effect of ancestry upon us. And that has been extremely helpful because most of us needed better ancestors. So uh, I found out that we could do that. Why? Because the things we inherited from them was simply forms of energy just like everything else is. Now let's get back to the way we were programmed as a kid. Um, at a young age, low brain frequency, uh, we pretty much believed what we were told, even though it might have kind of been unreasonable at the time, because the brain uh, at a young age just really takes everything pretty much as fact. Uh, every now and then, some kid may be smart enough to disagree with it, but generally, you pretty much believe what you're told. So uh, the first seven years of a child's life is the most important because that's what's helped them to form their belief system that will affect them the rest of their life. And there is a religious organization that knows this, and they're very good at it, and they've been practicing for at least a couple thousand years. And um, I, I was aware of this. I was fortunate to be aware of this before uh, my, my little girl was born. And I brainwashed her in a different way. I actually, I wrote a book about it. And um, I didn't want her to grow up being brainwashed by society, religion, or anything else out there. So I did my best to teach her to think for herself. And one of the, um, I don't know who all is listening out here today, but uh, I don't know what age you are or if you have kids or whatever, but whatever you want your kids to grow up and become, you have to tell them that whenever they're little. And uh, they, uh, they become, well, that's, that's the way they start to think. So before my kid could talk, I would say, actually from the night she was born, I started saying something to her every night when I would put her to sleep. And it was every day in every way, April is getting better and better and better. When the kid learned to put words together, those were the first words she said. Wow. So um, we, uh, I just wish the rest of the world knew this and could train their kids this way they would have far fewer problems and a lot more success. I mean, there's just a lot better way of doing things than what's being done in the world. So uh, it, we have to think sometimes, how were we programmed? Well, I was programmed with a poverty mentality, being a product of these mountains, most people were poor. And I got to thinking one day, how many generations of poverty mentality have I inherited? I mean, we've been in these mountains here for over 250 years. 
uh, we came here, actually, we came here when the white man and the Indians were still fighting. And my third great granddaddy was killed by the Shawnee Indians in 1792. Uh, so um, these were all very poor mountain people. This is not good farmland, it's just rugged mountains here. So uh, land like this does not produce wealthy people for the most part. So uh, the other wealthier people got the better land and the people with the poorer people got the mountains. That's just kind of the way it worked. And I got to thinking, how many generations of poverty mentality have I inherited? Well, I don't know, but a lot of them. So uh, I got to thinking about this. A poverty mentality is nothing more than a belief system. And I have it. I was born with it. My ancestors had it. Well, if I don't do something about it, then my kid and my descendants are going to have the same problem. And I want them to have an easier life than what I had. So I've got to do something about it. So I found that I could neutralize the negative effect of a poverty mentality upon myself that would be carried on to my descendants. And I tell this story in class and, and invariably a hand will go up. Well, how do you know it worked? And the answer is simple. I counted the money. So I uh, just want to throw that out that uh, to folks out there listening, that you do have the ability to change the way you have been programmed. So, okay, wh where do we want to go next? Love it, Raymond. So thank you. Um, I have to say that that simplicity that you taught at your seminar helped me. And I just stopped saying, yeah. I'm sorry. We I stopped saying, sorry. Okay, we got a problem. The screen is freezing up and your voice is breaking up. So uh, okay. when I, whenever I do this, that means I didn't hear you. So let's, let's try again. Okay. One thing that you mentioned was the human resonance and how the energy is really changing right now in the earth um, since 2001. Can you share more about that? I can say a little about it, but the first thing I've got to tell you is I don't know everything. I know a few things. I have been measuring energy since 1998. The energy of the earth and of the people. Well, let me, let me say that different. Let's call it the potential energy of a person. Uh, that I, I can be a little more accurate on that. So to give you an example, back in 98, on a scale we were using, which may or may not be a scientific scale, I really don't know. If we could get a person up to an energy of 8,000, that was optimal. Today, that's obsolete. I hesitate to tell people how high we're getting energy today because it doesn't sound reasonable. And in all honesty, I might not be right. But in the last, let's say the last six months or so, I have seen the potential energy of the group of people that I work with on my energy clearing go up to unbelievable levels. And it has been consistent because I do energy clearing on my group of people every morning and usually every afternoon. I started out doing this once a month and as fast as the energy changes, I started doing it about twice a day because I like to make sure that uh, what we do helps people. And once a month just wasn't enough at all. And once a week wasn't enough. So I think, well, twice a day is about as good as I can do for the folks. Um, now, what is causing this energy to rise is what I don't know. I just know that it is. I just do not know the cause of it. But I say this, we are able to do things now that we couldn't even imagine doing just a few years ago. Uh, I remember 
in 90, back in the mid nineties, I was just learning to DAOs and I would attend doubting conferences. And in order to actually do, make any difference on the land, like move a vein of water, you had to physically go there and go through some long complicated procedure. Well, shortly after that, I moved a vein of water at a distance of 700 miles. So I think, okay, we're, we're doing better than what, uh, what we were, other people think we can do. I was also told that to clear a house, you had to go to the house and, and do your dowsing and various ceremonies and people complicated this stuff, something awful. I found, no, we can change the energy in any house, anywhere on planet Earth. Distance is not a factor. I want to get this across to all you folks that are listening. Distance is not a factor in whether you're successful or not in working on people. I have given people good drinking water, not a whole lot of people, but a few, in six continents on this planet, everywhere except Antarctica. Of uh, course, I don't know anybody there. Uh, but that, that has proven to me time after time that distance doesn't make any difference. We can reach out anywhere on this planet. And you say, well, what about in outer space? Well, I don't know anybody out there either, so I don't have an answer for that. So uh, uh, don't, don't limit yourself to what you can do because people will put limits on each other, on themselves and on, uh, on other people. Dowsing societies put limits on what you can do and what you can't. I have been invited to speak for the American Society of Dowsers for their uh, annual meeting, let's see, when is this 11th day of June of this coming year? Uh, and they want to know what I want to talk about. And I said, well, I think I probably ought to talk about what you can do when you don't know you can't do it. Uh, so that may be one of the topics. I never am much of one for putting titles on things. I just try to give out information and somebody else can figure out what kind of title it needs. Um, but um, as far as the energy rising, yes, it is. Uh, the, the main thing, and maybe the only thing that I have to tell you on this is do not limit yourself in what you can do because uh, we have more energy to work with now than we ever had before. For example, uh, last, let's see, this would have been November of 2018. I was cleaning up an audience for a concert in Russia with 15,000 people and it worked. How do we know it worked? Well, the person doing the concert uh, said, said they had never been treated any better. Uh, everybody was happy. It was a, I, I did a reading of energy on the group before I did it. I did a reading afterward. They were just tremendously uh, higher energetically and happy. So uh, you and I, I don't know if you want to share any of the work or not. Uh, that's up to you. But you and I did work yesterday that I had never done before for yeah. one simple reason. You asked me to do it. Well, uh, you made me aware of things that I was not aware of. And it was awareness of things that needed to change. So I helped you change them. I don't think we could have done this two years ago, and I'm not sure we could have done it a year ago. I agree. But there's no doubt in my mind that we did it yesterday. Yeah. So um, this is the most beneficial and exciting news that I have to offer anybody out there that really wants to learn anything. Now, the very fact that you folks are listening to this today sets you apart from most of the rest of the world. Part of you had to get up in the middle of the night to listen to this broadcast. I got up, I got up at four o'clock this morning. It was important enough for me to do this. I realize it's only six on the East, East Coast time now, but I got up at four. I wanted to make sure that I was good, good shape and uh, uh, that everything was gonna go well. So the fact that you want to listen tells me that you are capable of getting uh, these kind of things done. 
So uh, go ahead now. I'll try not to talk too long on any one subject. And then you just tell me what subject you want next. No, well, your comment there just reminded me yesterday, Raymond, when you said not everybody is equal. Yesterday no, when you were saying that not everybody. is one of the biggest lies. That's one of the biggest lies that the human uh, to, that the public has ever been told is that uh, of human equality. Look, we have some very good people on this planet. People working to make a positive difference. We have serial killers, serial rapists, child molesters, human traffickers. Why the hell would anybody think that we're all equal? It is insanity. And then I hear people say, well, they're equal in sight of God. Well, God didn't tell me that. So do I believe all this stuff? No, I don't believe it. I don't think anybody that does needs to rethink the situation. And I don't really care if they agree with me or not. I'm just going to say what I believe to be true. But to me, this is not rocket science. It's open your eyes and look at what goes on in the world. It's humans have been brainwashed beyond belief. It's terrible. Absolutely agree. Well, I was going to ask. There ain't a whole lot more to say. On. <laughs> no. The Schumann resonance about the impact on people. Schumann yeah. resonance. Yeah. Oh, Schumann resonance. Okay, now that's a subject that I uh, don't really know much about. I did have a conversation yesterday with a person who knew a lot more than I did. All I can say is I have heard of something called Schumann resonance. I, it's some type of vibration in the earth. But do I understand it? No. But can I eliminate the negative effects upon people? Yes. But it has a time frame to it, seems like. I don't seem to have been able to do it uh forever uh but why do i think i can do it well when i'm doing a session with people i will check to see what is the effect of the human resonance upon this person and i get a very serious negative effect i will then neutralize that effect and many times their voice will change they will feel better and their energy will go up tremendously i mean this is something that's fairly consistent but what causes human resonance i do not know i'm going to venture something here to, to tell you something that I was told yesterday by a person that I respect. I, d I can't say that they were right, but they're saying that the, there's a lot of satellites been put out, out in orbit there, out near the ionosphere. And I mentioned ionosphere a while ago, the band of energy around the earth that pulsates at 10 beats per second. <coughs> and that that was interfering somehow with the vibration of the earth. All I can say is this may be true. I'm not educated enough to say it is or it isn't. So uh, what I will say is that as near as I can tell, we've had the ability to counteract or neutralize the human residence upon people for a period of time, but it's not a real long time. I have not been able to do it permanently. And the way I say it, and the simplest way to say this is energy work is like taking a bath. I'm relatively clean today, had a shower, clean clothes. I can go out and like yesterday, I was building a road by hand with a shovel. Okay. I get dirty. I need another bath. I can go out and clean the barn out. I can dig in the garden in the dirt. I need another bath. Energy work is the same way. Now, folks, your energy is your most valuable asset. So don't take it places to get it trashed. If you work in an environment and people bitch, whine, and complain, and you're just unhappy working there, you have the ability to change this. I was working last week with a lady that worked in some type of a mental health clinic. Well, those kind of places are energetic black holes. Usually the people who work there are not happy. The clients that comes in have problems, otherwise they wouldn't be there. And all this stuff just depletes a person's energy. 
just because they're in the same environment every day. And there's lots of places like that. Well, uh, the, what the folks don't know, and I've made films, I've written about this, I talk about it. I'm doing my best to educate people, but they got to listen and they got to do something. Is you have the ability to change your environment. Now, this is one of the problems uh, that I've had with dowsing societies. They have a belief, and I don't know who started it, but you can't do anything unless you get permission. There is absolutely no truth whatsoever in this. I've had them tell me this at dowsing conferences, and I say, no, look, folks, think a minute. Let's just use logic. Do you really think that I go out and track down the serial rapists, the serial killers, and people like that and ask for, for permission to change their behavior? Do you really think I do that? Well, they look at you and you get this blank, what I call deer in the headlight stare, like, oh, we never thought of that. Well, think. That's the biggest problem with humanity now. They haven't, th they haven't been thinking. Okay. Uh, start thinking. You can empower yourself. Now, I realize I say a lot of things pretty blunt, rough, and uh, what's the word? Politically incorrect. I'm aware of that. I do it on purpose. What it does, it weeds out the people I don't want to talk to. I mean, I'm, I'm very selective who I talk to. So this is why I say things like this. First of all, I want to get people to think. And if you're not capable of thinking, there's no point in wasting time. It's, it's, it's that simple. So you don't, I've got a website up, but you don't see any uh, sales pitches on it. Nobody gets a sales pitch from me as to whether they should come to my class or buy a book or DVD or whatever. I'll tell you, yeah, I've got them for sale. Yes, this is what they'll do. If you think they'll help you, you're welcome to buy them. If you're not, it's okay. I just uh, no, I don't like to put pressure on people at all. It's like this is what we have, take it or leave it. Um, now, let's see where else we're going this morning. Um, yep. Bring um, me back to the subject we were on. Okay. Yes, I'm getting a lot of questions about um, just about what you said about clearing waters, spirits, fragmented souls, and about how we can impact yeah. that. Yeah, so people are just asking about that. You know, I missed uh, you. But what was the last question? I missed, the, I missed that last few words. Okay, so just about how we can clear water, um, spirits, um, basically negative entities, um, human resonance, all that kind of stuff. Just about spirits and entities and clearing them out of water and people and cities. Well, okay, there is no short answer on that, but except this one, you do it by intent. And when I say that, then the question will be, well, how do you do that? So this is why I avoid uh, trying to answer a complicated question, uh, because whatever I say, the next question is going to be, well, how did you do that? So the word is intent. Learn to use your mind. You got to know the right question to ask. You say, well, how do you do? How do you do that? Well, this one I'm going to tell you. I have recorded uh, out there as far as how to energize water. I made a DVD that will not only show you how the intent was that it will do it for you. Uh, and I, I want to tell a story here. Yesterday I was visiting by Skype with a lady in um, Salem, Oregon, and about. Mm, three years ago, I believe, uh, the water supply of Salem, Oregon was uh, contaminated with algae growth. And I don't really know too much about that, but they could wash the car, they could wash the dishes, but don't drink the water. Uh, and that was in the month of May, I believe it was. And, uh, and they said that this was probably going to uh, last until October, where she drives up on the mountain to the lake, takes my recording of energizing water and plays it with the intent to go to the lake. She played it three times just to make sure. Two days later, the quarantine on the water was lifted. It was fine. Now, I told that story on a radio show. Uh, I don't remember where, 
Uh, but um, I got a email from someone with the article in the paper of, from Salem, Oregon, how that the water got cleaned up. But uh, the person writing the article had no clue, had no clue that I even exist. They didn't know how it happened. They just knew it happened. So a lot of times you just work behind the scenes and you do things and uh, you know, people know, well, yeah, something changed, but they don't know what changed it. So you don't, I don't really need my picture in the paper and be on the headlines and all that kind of stuff. I kind of, kind of a, actually I'm a hermit, really. I live way back out here in the mountains and I, I seldom ever see anybody. I talk to people like this, but um, to, to get, get back to how to do this, uh, I've got a, a DVD, Energized Water, real simple. It'll show you how, it'll do it for you. I've got one on clearing out uh, uh, entities, in schools, homes, churches, bars, workplaces, wherever. It's called Change Energy, Change Your Life. So uh, I've made a DVD on a variety of subjects. So if people want to have a specific thing they want to do, they only have to use that one DVD. You don't have to wonder, think, okay, search through a whole bunch of stuff to find out how. I've got them uh, kind of in categories. For, for various things. So that's that's the easiest way to answer that question. Brilliant. So fragmented okay, souls. Go, go ahead. I think fragmented, the screen up again. Yeah, fragmented souls. So you were saying that you've noticed a lot more people have fragmented souls. And I was gonna ask, I mean, are you able to check on the webinar right now if who's got fragmented souls, for example? Um, I do not know exactly what causes fragmented souls. So since I don't know, there's not much reason to guess. All I can say is there is an epidemic of people with fragmented souls. Now, uh, when this happens, the person's energy will drop to zero and their personality will change. I received an email yesterday morning about two separate situations of people who were causing some problems. Both of them had fragmented souls. Um, so generally speaking, I can bring the souls back and their personality, their original personality will come back. Uh, and the energy will always raise 20,000 points. I've never seen an exception on that. But I haven't been able to protect people from this indefinitely. Uh, there's some people I've had to clean up like about every two weeks. Now, uh, that's another thing of why human, uh, another example of why humans aren't equal. There's some people I have cleaned up and it's just like it just lasts the rest of their life, on and on. They don't really have any other problems. There's other people that need to be cleaned up almost daily. It, I mean, human. there's a lot of variety in human beings. Uh, so I can say th another thing I, uh, I tell people in class. Folks, there's been a few thousand people set through my classes in the last 20 some years. I've had two outstanding people that did things that was unheard of. Uh, those two were my friend, Jeff Jones, who decided he didn't need to eat anymore. He'd put all his vitamins and, mineral, uh, and minerals in water. He hadn't had a meal in 23 years. There's my friend, Benny Pig, who cut that joint of his finger off right there with a table saw. He grew it back in less than a month complete with a nail. Okay, nobody else did that. But most people were benefited by it. They helped the, the families improve life at home. Some of them used it for prosperity, to get a better job, uh, improve their business. <clears throat> most of folks used it and got a fair amount of benefit from it. But there were a few people that wondered what the class was about. They had no clue. They sat with me for two or three days and left not having a clue. 
what the class was about. So there's no reason to believe in human equality. It just don't work. It, it don't exist. So um, everybody that sat through class got the same information. Some used it, some didn't. Everybody that listens to my DVD gets the same information. Some use it, some don't. It's just the way humans are. So go ahead, wherever you want to go next. Well, what would be really good, Raymond, is maybe just how open would you be right now just to tuning into the group and just just showing, for example, how you do dowsing and like tuning into the group, like for energy, for fragmented souls, entities, just this kind of stuff. Just so okay, I'll be glad to. But yeah. right now, if it's okay here with you, I'd like to make the folks out there that are listening an offer. I have some free uh, films that I have made. Uh, I put them kind of in a package deal uh, or put them all, all, all together. I've got a couple of articles I wrote, very short articles. They were written very bluntly. I've got a little slideshow and I've got uh, four... Uh, places where I've made uh, talks to dowsing conferences that we filmed, and a few little short uh, three or four mi minute videos. If you would like to have them, send me an email and I will send them to you at no charge. Um, if you want to know what else we have to offer, go to my website, raymondgrace.us. That's real simple. Um, now, I will give you my email address, and all you got to do is, I would like to know where you're from. I don't really have to know that, but I'm just kind of curious. And uh, just tell me you'd like to have the free pack of DVDs or videos, and I'll, uh, I'll email them to you. Um, so my email address is Raymond. I'm going to spell it for you. R-A-Y-M-O-N. Do not put a D on it, okay? So it's Raymond at RaymondGrace.us. I'll say it again. Raymond at RaymondGrace.us. Okay, so if you, <clears throat> I should have some time. It may be, well, maybe tomorrow before I can get them out to you because it's going to be a busy day today. But if you ask for them, I'll, I'll get them to you. I'm, this is just what I do for people who are interested in learning more and then have to look at it, they can decide, okay, do I want to learn any more or do I not? And if you do, uh, then that, that's fine. And if you don't, that's okay too. Uh, just please be aware that uh, about everything I do is pretty blunt. Okay, now, how do we do this? What's dowsing? All dowsing is, is the movement of a pendulum and I have a bullet, wow. I know this offends some people. Well, y'all got a problem. I don't. I don't really care if it offends people or not. I use a bullet. Why? Because I like bullets. And if you don't like them, don't use them. But don't bother to try to convert me to your way of thinking. Uh, so um, I, I have a bullet on a chain here. Another thing, whenever you're dining in a restaurant and you pull out a bullet to energize your food, it causes people to get back away from you and they're not crowd you too much. So it, it really kind of kind of handy to use like that. Uh, so uh, there's four basic movements to a pendulum. And actually, uh, I've got a video, I'm going to cover this real easy, but I've got a video that I would be glad to give you if you want it uh, on this subject. And it's the video I made uh, for the, uh, just a minute, Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada Animal Expo. And I made that film in, in November of 19, uh, of 2018. Okay. And I do give a brief explanation of dowsing on that. Why? Because I was speaking to people that didn't know anything about dowsing. Uh, I have other films that I will give you where I was addressing dowsing societies. So I made those just a little bit uh, more complex. So I've got kind of a variety there. And why I'm, am I doing this? It is a way to promote dowsing worldwide. Why? 
because if people would learn to dials and to use their minds, they can create a better life for themselves. It's that simple. And if I don't tell them, maybe nobody else will. Nobody has yet. So whenever I learned dowsing back uh, 25 years ago, I think this is something that could really help a lot of people out there if they knew how, but they don't know. So I think maybe I can tell them. Well, at the time I was a construction worker. How am I gonna reach the world? Well, I didn't know, but I just started doing things and somehow or another the word got around and I reached about 142 countries. So I thought, well, these folks are interested. Let's provide them uh, some free information and get them started. So that's uh, just part of what I do. Okay, so right here's the movements. Uh, this is uh, direct to, to me and away from me. That is a yes. This right here from right to left is a no. This right here is a clockwise circle. If you wish to increase something like peace, love, happiness, prosperity, it'll go clockwise. This is a, is a counterclockwise circle. If you want to decrease something like fear, anger, grief, it'll go counterclockwise. So do we have the ability to change people like this, change the way they feel? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you will not get the same uh, results with everybody, or at least I don't, but overall you will get, uh, get positive results if that's what they want. Now, please understand something. I don't think we can use dowsing to make people do what they don't want to do. Uh, and it's like trying to uh, get people well. If I get an email saying, will you work on my Aunt Lucy? And I'll write back and say, tell your Aunt Lucy to write and ask for help for herself. Because I found in most cases, the people that are asking for her probably don't want my help. So there's no point in wasting time. I make everybody ask for something. And if they're not willing to ask, I'm not willing to do it. That, that saves me a lot of time. It took me a long time to figure that out. I used to uh, accept every request I got to work on people. But I found out that now it would work part of the time, most of the time it didn't. It's why? Because the people weren't doing anything for themselves. It's that simple. So what all can we do with dowsing? Well, I would suggest that if you really want to learn to douse, keep a pendulum in your hand at all times, or as much as possible. I douse when I drive. Do I look at the pendulum? No, I look at the road but I can feel where it moves. And uh, I, I have somewhere, now I'm not real smart on the internet, but somewhere out there, I have a dowsing chart that you are very welcome to, un to load up for free. As many of them as you want. Make copies, give them away, I don't mind. That's why I put it out there. So um, you, you, have, you may have to search a little bit to find it because Obviously, I don't know much at all about websites or computers. That's why I have somebody else take care of problems like that for me. Um, but we've got a fair amount of information out there for people who want to learn to dials. So just, um, just go and, and look at it and read it. Um, so let's see, what else were we on here? As to what you can do with dowsing, probably about anything you believe you can. But uh, practice with things. Okay, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. So you ask, what is the result of going to the right? What's the result of going to the left? That is, if you get lost somewhere. Okay, I even ask, what's the result of going to the post office before lunch or after lunch? Why? Sometimes it doesn't make any difference. Sometimes it does. It, my timing is very important. And it may be, if I'm there at the right time, I meet somebody I haven't seen for a long time and I'll talk to them. It may be something as simple as that. Uh, on traveling on a trip, ask, are there any negative probable futures? That means what's the chance of something going wrong if it's possible to go wrong? If you get a lot of negative probable futures, you might want to postpone the trip for an hour or you have to doubt to determine this because timing is everything. And one of your affirmations, in my opinion, should be, I am always at the right place at the right time. Because every traffic wreck that you ever saw on the road 
would not have happened if one driver had been faster or slower. So timing is very important. So program yourself to be at the right place at the right time. It's uh, just one of the more useful affirmations. But you see, there's not very many words in it. Uh, you don't need to put any details in it. Just keep it real simple. And the, the truth is you have the ability to do this. You, you have the ability to, to time things. I remember one day I was going to, to uh, pick up somebody that was going on a trip with me. It was a, about a five hour drive. And I said, I'll be there at, I think it was four o'clock. Uh, and I had some errands to run. There was road construction. I ran, drove through two rainstorms, but I drove in the driveway at exactly four o'clock. Why? Because I had set that intent. I have driven over halfway across the United States and got there 15 minutes early. Uh, well, I've seen this happen so many times that it's not a coincidence. We actually have the ability to do this. So uh, by all means, uh, program your food. I realize with the um, virus right now that many people are not eating out and I never really ate out anyway, unless I was traveling, uh, but I would always energize my food. I would just hold a pendulum over the, uh, the plate when I got it and say, I want to raise the vibration of this food to the highest appropriate level to keep me strong and healthy. Keep it simple like that. Uh, so uh, just practice with dowsing. Uh, practice on anything you can think of. Um, let me throw one out about the rain here. Uh, and, uh, my little grandkid was having a birthday party. Um, I was invited uh, there, it was about 30 miles away. So when I got there, April said, uh, they're calling for rain this afternoon. Real good change of it. Uh, will you hold the rain off till seven o'clock? Well, I just stepped out uh, kind of away from the group and I just took my knife here and I just come right down like this. <clears throat> I did this. I split the clouds and pushed them apart. And it didn't rain until seven o'clock. At seven o'clock it rained. So uh, we do some things like that every now and then. I won't say it works all the time, but it seems to work pretty good. And every time that I do something and win, I always have this thought, what can we do next? And by doing that, I'm opening up my mind for more possibilities of what else now, what, what else is available. What, um, and by doing that, you attract opportunities, you attract ideas that you can do more than you thought you could. So, okay, go, go ahead, Warren. Warren, I don't know, uh, what time did, how long of talk did we agree on this morning? An hour or what? We were hour and 15 minutes now. About an hour and a half, I think. Okay, Aaron, I, that's okay because I've got, I've got something else coming up here this morning. I've got, I've got somebody that'll be here by, uh, within a little over 30 minutes. So yeah, all right, we'll, we'll go another 15 minutes. So what do you, what do you want to do? I would love, I would love you to demonstrate um, show dowsing in real life and see what we show on people like clear the human resonance, clear fragmented souls just on this group. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> well, just tune in. Everyone. Our, look, why don't we do this for, for the folks up there? I think I've already checked these people, but does everybody that's listening here, uh, is there a soul in this dimension? No, it isn't. Okay. How many is it? About 10 people. Okay. Now, that means we got 10 people out there that need help. So let's see what I can do. What is the average energy of these people? It's zero. Okay, what's the average energy of your group today? Um, about 17,000, okay. So what let's do for these folks, let's bring their soul back into this dimension and ground it. Let's bring a soul back into their body. Let's bring a spirit of life back into their body. Okay. And the energy, average energy of the group went from 17,000 to about 26,000. Uh, this is what I would do in class. I, and you, you saw how simple it was. 
All right. Oh, now, uh, anybody living in a haunted house? No, I already checked that out this morning. Uh, we don't have anybody that's possessed. We just had a 10 people that were fragmented souls. Now, uh, they raise the energy of the entire group. They always do. All right. Now, um, Oh, let's see here. Uh, what's the effect of Schumann resonance on this group of folks? It's about a minus 100. Well, let's neutralize that. Okay, now I'm going to go through something. Now, those of you who write for a uh, free video, I'm going to send you one called Problem Package. And it was a video I made and I put a whole lot of problems in it. I think seven, but I added three more to it since then. Of uh, most people, are affected by this around the world. So I'm going to tell you what they are. For all you people, I'm going to neutralize the negative effect of the surrounding area upon you. All right, because you're affected by the energy around you. All right, the next thing I want to do is neutralize negative effect of um, the mass consciousness of people. See, uh, now in this video that I'm going to send you, if you ask for it, I explain all of this. So I'm going to be real brief here right now. Uh, that's the mass consciousness of people. Next is 5G. Uh, next is radiation. Uh, next is, um, well, I put riots in there, but right now we're not having any riots. At the time I'm, I made that video, there, there were some. Uh, so let's put the a negative effect of uh, social media. That's what I added to it. That's not in the video, but uh, put put that in there uh, and the news broadcast and the government and the virus and all negative emotions associated with it. I put all that in a, in a, uh, a video, explained it all as I went. Now, this is what you can do. Every morning when you get up, simply get your pendulum and say, I want to neutralize Raymond's problem package upon me, my home and my family or you can include the people you work with uh, and see what happens. It will probably take you about 30 seconds, may take you as much as a minute. Uh, and I've already got the whole thing set up for you. I explained it real well, I hope. Um, I explained it a lot more there than I did here. Uh, so do this. I think it will help keep your energy up. Now let's see what happens to your energy of the group when I did that. Well, Warren, it went to, and it always does, and this is going to be mind boggling. It went to 200,000. That's what I'm saying. 20 years ago, if we could get people to 8,000, we had a, a major accomplishment. I simply neutralized 10 things on the people that's listening this morning and raised your energy level, almost uh, raised it to 200,000. It happens every morning when I do a clearing on the, on a group of people. I've never seen it fail. But well, not since it's not since the energy got so high. This has only been true since maybe um, late summer, or September, sometime along in there. So that tells us we've got we're at an energetic position that we've never been before. So let's use it. All right. Next thing. <clears throat> Let's take any negative emotions in these folks' bodies and in their homes and turn them into self-love. That's one of the simplest things to do. And uh, you could probably, well, I know you can do it. You can also do it at your workplace. Now, if you kids out there, or you put folks out there have kids or grandkids in school, clean up the school. You say, how? Well, that, inter that video I made, uh, or, or DVD, and it's downloadable. So you don't need a physical copy. You get it and you, you got it almost instantly. Uh, I've got in there how to, how to clean up school. There's no different clean up a house. Whether you clean, and then somebody say, well, what about my church? Look, folks, it, it doesn't matter if it's your house, where your kids go to school, your church, Joe's bar. It doesn't matter. The principle works for all of it. So uh, that's another thing I've run into, Warren. Folks think that there is a different technique for each problem, mm, not really. Uh, I mean, there's a different technique for a headache than there is cleaning the entities out of a out of a bar. But 
uh, as far as what kind of building or location it is, family reunion, it doesn't matter. Jail, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's, you use the same, you use the same things. So um, just keep everything as simple as you possibly can. All right, what else are we going to do with these folks? Okay, we got the negative emotions out of their body. We turned them into love. Um, let's do this. I found out. I believe that I can raise the level of oxygen. I've never told you this because I never thought about it. Raise the level of oxygen within their blood and their organs. Now, I, I did some experimenting with this. I'd be on the phone with somebody and say, hey, I'm going to do something for you. Let me know if you can feel it. But I wouldn't tell them what I did. And I would give, I would raise the level of oxygen and their pulse would change. And they, they get more energy and they would take a deep breath. So um, let's, let's try this with all the group out here and see what happened. Now, you folks that write me uh, or uh, your free videos, let me know if you felt any of this stuff. I, I, I kind of like to know if, if we're reaching you or if we're not. I think we are, but I'd prefer to hear it from, from, from you. All right, let's see where else we're going, Warren. Um, hmm. Well, let's see, we're 722. Uh, What's the energy of the folks now? Well, we've got them up to about 400,000. Well, that's pretty darn good for no more time than we spent on it. That's real good. I would like to know, uh, can can those folks write you in, uh, uh, write to you right now and tell you if they're feeling anything? I'd kind of like to know that. Yes. Miko says, heads buzzing wall. Kalen feels huge uplifting. Christine feels it. Yeah, lots of people, Raymond. People are really feeling it. Vision is clear okay, well, someone else. Okay, well, I'm really glad to help you folks out there. I really am. Um, okay, and, and I'll also, I want to thank you for putting this together, Warren, because you're giving those folks an opportunity uh, that they didn't have otherwise. You're giving me the opportunity to talk to them that I didn't have. So, yeah, I, I appreciate what you're doing. Okay. Oh, um, right. All right, let's do something. Let, let's just really do something. You want to give them some decent water this morning? What, I'm sorry? Yeah, you want to give them some good water to drink? Yes, please. Good water. By uh, the time we do that, it's going to be about time to close out, but they can write you in the meantime. Okay, now all you folks listening out there, I want I want to do something, and then I want you to follow directions. Okay, right now just listen. What I'm going to do is ask: Are there any entities in any of your drinking water? No. Okay, so uh, now I want to take all of the negative emotions in your water source. That means the water that flows into your kitchen faucet. I want to take all. I want to take all the negative emotions in that water and turn them into love. Okay. And I'm just going to hold the pendulum up here, and you can see. Now, can I do this without a pendulum? Well, sure. But the pendulum is a tool, and the length of time and the velocity at which it spins tells me how much energy is required to correct the problem. And this is taken quite a bit. So, what do we got, Warren? As many as fifty people. About 40, yep. About 40, okay, that's fine. All right, now, what I'd like to do now is uh, take the spirit of greed, because see, water has a spirit, but the spirit of water will not stay where the spirit of greed is, and the spirit of greed is in most water supplies. So what I want to do is take all the greed from the water and turn it into pure water. That's transforming one energy into another. All right, now we got that done. Any curses upon the water, anything like that? No. So, uh, have we got it ready to work on here? Yeah, let's scramble the frequency of the chemical, biological, radiological pollutant, as well as chlorine, fluoride, any bad odor, any bad taste, um, anything less than pure water. We are going to scramble those frequencies and adjust them to the frequency of pure water. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is invite in the spirit of the water. Now, there's a big spring out in Great Falls, Montana, that I use as a standard. 
So what I want to do is invite in the spirit of the water in that spring in Great Falls, Montana. And I want to bring it in to all of you folks out there listening around the world. I want to bring the spirit of that water in and put it in the water line that flows into your house so that the water that flows out of your faucet will be equal to the water in that spring. Okay. Now, have we got that done? Have we got rid of all of the uh, chemicals, chlorine, fluoride, bad odor, bad taste, anything, any impurities at all in the water? All right, now here's your direction. Go to the kitchen right now, turn the faucet on, let it run for 10 seconds. Then get a glass of water and take a sip. Then write Warren and tell him how it tastes, okay? Okay, I'll do it too. Yeah, my tastes are different. What about everyone else? All right, see what they say. Jody, very clean. Water, normally bad. Scott, tastes pure. Mika, wow, I don't usually drink tap water until it's been filtered, but tastes good. Martin, can't smell chlorine. Kaylin, very pure, normally chlorine. Wow. Hey, that's yeah. good. You folks are making my day, and I'm really glad to help you out. So, uh, Warren, this has been a good talk this morning. I really appreciate you hosting this. And um, it's, um, it's a way to reach out to people around the world and um, get, uh, get something started out there. We didn't get into the cleaning up of the cities. Um, oh, the simplest way I think to answer that and, and to address that is use that change the energy, change your life film and apply it to all the government offices. Um, we've, we've done, well, we've done that before. I've, I've made that really to clean up schools, churches, hospitals, uh, it's the same method that'll clean up all of them. So that's probably one of the better things to use on that. And um, if you want to clean up other people's water, well, I showed you how, or if you need some help, we've got a film on that. that whether you need it or not, you may not need it. You may be able to do it yourself. Um, but we've kind of hit the high spots on things. The biggest thing I wanted to impress upon you is how to focus your mind because without focusing the mind nothing else is going to work very well so uh, i hope i made it clear i realize sometimes i get a bit scattered when i talk i'll get on maybe two subjects at once and get them confused but I, that's why i uh, warn I, I ask you to kind of kind of guide things here today and you did a real good job so i'm uh, really well pleased to, to work with you on this so um if I can do something for you while you holler at me, keep me posted on, on how it goes. So we'll, uh, I'm about ready to close out unless you want to say something. No, well, look, thank you, Raymond. Um, all I can say is I'll email you as well about those problem packs and books in case people email me, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever I send out that pack, it's, I tell people, feel free to share this. Uh, it's just, it's just my way of helping to get people get started in, uh, in this. All right. We shall. Uh, and just if I did it. Well, thank you, Raymond. Sorry, Ray. You're welcome. 
Oh, okay. I see what you got here. Okay. Yeah. So all this is here, everyone. This is Raymond's email. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And this mm -hmm. is also for a donation to Raymond because um, we're going to be looking after him to thank him for coming and speak. So just this is our PayPal account. So all we have to do is put some in here and we'll just forward it straight on to Raymond. Um, and if anyone wants to have any more involvement in coming to webinars like this on energy, is there anybody else who'd like to do that and would like us to put this in the chat link just to register your name for future stuff like this? Yep, okay, so just, just get that list. We'll put it on the Facebook group as well. And thank you so much, Raymond. Um, we really appreciate you coming. I'm glad, appreciate the invitation and uh, wish all of you out there the best. So have you a good day, good evening, depending on where you are. The sun is just coming up now here. So I'm gonna get out and uh, do some work today. So, okay. Thanks for coming, Raymond. Okay, everyone, well, thanks for coming. And um, like I said, so we will be doing more of these kind of webinars. So this is our link for free webinars list, which is going to be on energy, which will be looking on dowsing. I'm even hoping to convince Raymond to actually come and help me do a dowsing clearing. I'm planning to do some teaching on energy work and clearing because I've worked a lot with Raymond now and cleaned up cities and I've been working on our city. I do want to tell you all that the what Raymond's teaching, how profound this is. I mean, in our state, West Australia, we, we, we were actually consistently doing energy work. And some of you may have heard about WA, how until probably two weeks ago, we did not go down the lockdown path or anything compared to other states. Now, like I said, what, where it's coincidental or anything like that, um, we were doing this kind of work on West Australia constantly, myself, my son and others. Around about three months ago, we slackened off. I must admit, I got complacent. Plus, I got caught up with a, some personal challenges in my life. When the lockdown first happened and was announced on the, on the 1st of February, I was stunned. And I'll admit, I wept for, for a while. And of course, I realized what, I, what had happened. So the next day, we got back to it. And in fact, did more than ever. We went right in and we noticed that since we would backed off, the energy of the city had dropped down to nearly less than 1,000. So we'd, be, we'd been consistently around the 25,000 um, plus and 20,000 is the minimum scale, you know, for really good healthy cities energy using the dowsing scale that Raymond and the dowsers have come up with. We were down to 1,000, which pretty much meant Perth was pretty much run by demons and entities. I was in shock and we went ahead and did this. And I think within about 24 hours of doing this, the Premier got up because we checked and found out he was possessed. We found out that all the main leaders of our state now were possessed with spirits. We cleared them out and cleared them out the city. We got the energy back to about 23,000. And the Premier got up the next day and apologised. He said he would lift the lockdown. By the end of the week, it was gone. We worked even harder. We got the energy up. Um, in fact, Raymond and I got it to as high as 120,000 yesterday, the highest we've ever seen a city get up to. I know I got up to 45,000 probably the day before that. And when it was 45,000, we noticed that people suddenly weren't walking around with masks hardly at all. People were walking around. Suddenly it was like mind control had broken off people. I find everywhere the last few days in our city now, business owners are saying that we're not gonna put up with this. People who before were saying the opposite. So this stuff does work. It really, really does work. And I'm so excited by what I'm seeing. And that's why I asked Raymond to come and do this. And even Raymond was excited. Like I said, Raymond does not do webinars for groups like this. He, I've not been able to get him to do one. And he, yeah, people have been walking around without masks with confidence now. People have been speaking out. People are starting to step up. We've got people even saying like, no, we're gonna cause revolution if we have to. We're not gonna let our business get done this. And yes, Miko, we can, we can bring this to every city. We really can. We're planning, we're already planning. I, I worked with Raymond last night on a checklist to go through on cities, go through regions. We're gonna be doing up an organized um, a group to, to do this and have checklists and get systems and get people trained up and everything. So it's a bit of an initiative and I told Raymond about it. So that's why he said to me, look, I'll speak for you anytime you want, Warren. He said, I'm excited by this. So yeah, 
no question. It's time to do something about this and not let these uh, the absolute fuckwits, excuse the French, come and just do this shit to our cities. It's just bullshit. And I'm not up for it. And I, I've got better things to do than run around carrying protests and standing on freeways. I'm like, let's deal with the spirits and the entities that are causing this shit and knock them out. Because we found when you do that, it's amazing. We, the medical board guy in WA was particularly was speaking out and going really hardcore about the whole mask and everything. So we did some work and dispossessed him and, and, and basically shut him up and used some tricks I'd learned from Raymond on how to push him out the way. Ever since then, no one's heard of him in the media. He's just gone right into the background, you know? And so, yeah, look, you can do it. And it's like Raymond said, it's just believing you can do it and seeing yourself as crazy enough to do this. So, yeah, look, I mean, that's where I'm at. I'm like, this is honestly, it's nonsense. And I think we all agree. And it's time just to say, no, 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 no. You know, I remember after bawling my eyes out, I, I was just really annoyed. I said, no, I said, you know, your motherfuckers may have gotten to other states, and but you know, you get you're kicking, you're kicking us out. So we just went and booted out every demon we could find. And what was really good was you've always got to get independent verification. So we, you know, asked Raymond just to double check, and he said, "Well, whatever you guys have done, you booted all the demons out." And I said, "Thank bloody God!" You know. So yeah, look, it, it's something we can do, everyone. We really can. So. Um, yeah, the more people we can get who's serious and trained up and values their freedom, I have been given downloads that we've got two years to stop communism taking over Australia and pretty much losing all your freedoms and living like China with social credits and all that shit, okay? That's what I was given in a download. We've got two years. Now, it's not a lot of time. And all I, all I know is that enough people are waking up, but the more we do this, the mind control breaks off. People start going, hang on a sec, maybe, maybe these politicians aren't, you know, Mr. Jesus. You know, maybe they're not the answer to save our souls. And we're noticing that now. People I never thought would question this thing are questioning it now, all, all since we started doing this a week ago. Like business owners saying to me, no, this is nonsense. Like three business owners literally did that. Well, look, Gaby, thank you. You know, anyone can do this. And the truth is, as I told people from our intercession and our, our energy work group, I said, you know, we can only do so much. If you want your state and you value it, you've got to be willing to do something about it. And it's got to mix up this kind of work and practical work. So I'm not dismissing the practical. And there's some amazing people out there who are doing amazing work to bring awareness and set up groups and get out notices of consent and all that kind of stuff. But we, we can do something behind the background that, what I see is the greatest opportunity. It's the work that no one sees. It's the work there's no ego. It's the work that no one knows about. It's the work where no one will ever give you any credit for. But it's probably the most rewarding work because you'll sit there and see the results. You know, Often, as Raymond said, you can run around looking like, hey, I'm some great you know, freedom fighter. Or you can be the person in the background. It's not the most exciting job, but... You know, it's a good feeling when you see a change has been made. And we've seen this so many times. I remember when Raymond first taught this and my son, one of my sons had conjunctivitis really badly in his eye. Like his whole eye was puffed up. And I'd been doing lots of practice on dowsing and I just looked at him and all I did was did a pendulum. And I just spoke to him and said, your eye is healed. And his eye got healed right in front of everyone. And I was like, fuck, you know, I, even I got a surprise, you know, and I've seen like that stuff over. At Raymond's seminar, my knee, I could not literally um, walk downstairs at all without this searing pain. I had to get help. And I just ordered my knee using what Raymond did, doused it, call back the spirit of the knee, because he said to me, your knee, the spirit of your knee is gone, and I called it back in. And then I just started to speak over my knee, and I just called it in, and I said, I call the ligaments, the joints back, and over three days I kept doing it. On the last day, I, I ordered my knee, and I walked out of there with, with my knee completely normal. So, yeah, Miko, your left eye has been watery. It's literally just stopped. Yeah. You know, we do this kind of clearing and frequency work daily virtually now. So, yeah, look, there's a lot you can do, like in the southwest, in the different states, in different countries of the world. And this, yeah, basically, like they said, humans get brainwashed. And we've got like 40-odd people here who are not brainwashed. And I, I like what Raymond says myself. I remember going there with my boys when they were 11 and 15 
and they're giggling away when Raymond's standing there with his gun and his hunting knife and all that. And he just says that. He goes, all people are not equal. And he said, evil people deserve to die. And, of course, my kids are cracking up. And I'm just going like, <laughs> I just said, this, this is great, you know, because it's so politically incorrect. And I remember someone challenging him. And he said, look, he goes, you're welcome to go up the road and run your own seminar. But he said, at my seminar, this is what I teach. He said, you can be quiet. Thanks very much. And he afterwards said, look, he said, you just don't tolerate people, you know, putting their energy and mixing it into yours. He said, I, I have a no toxic energy zone in my house and in my energy field. He goes, demons know that and people in my life know that. So there's a lot to learn. So anyway, who would like to know more about this stuff and is very keen to hear about it and come along when we do some of these ones? Who's, who's keen to come along? And be, in, and be in this and that. Excellent. Yeah. You give us the information and we're going to put it on our Facebook group as well for those listening. Um, you know, please. So, look, thank you, guys. It's really, I, I, I personally am so wrapped how many people are waking up right now. And the fact that people are coming to this webinar and keen to learn this stuff, I really am, you know. It's just, I'm just going on the group now just to put it up there. So... Oh, yep, Nat, Jet, you're in, great. So I've got lots of people in the Facebook group. So we're putting it up there. So there is a link. Okay, everyone. So thank you so much for coming tonight. And I really, really appreciate your time and what you've done. So we look forward to seeing you all next time. And, uh, and, and we'll let you know about dowsing stuff and thanks for your interest. See you next time, everyone. By the way, if you're interested, tomorrow morning um, at 9.30 Perth time, or which is 8.30 in the evening American time for New York, we're doing a 45-minute manifestation just on how to use some of what Raymond said. I'm just going to be talking about manifestation, how to program your mind to get the things you want. So I'll be doing a 45-minute live stream tomorrow. You'll see details of it on Awakening Within. Anyone interested in coming to that out of interest? So it's just on how to program your mind to get what you want, not what you don't want, basically is what it's about. Yeah, so you'll find it on the same Awakening Within Transformational Group. And are you on our email list, everyone, by the way? Is everyone on our email list here? Because if you're not, we do have a membership site where I'll just quickly show you it, actually, because I think most of you wouldn't actually know this. So if you go into the membership site, we've actually got a whole lot of free really good programs here so i'll just put this up here for you um so you can see it's here awakening within course not a member sign up so if you go in there and you click on that to sign up um you'll be able to actually get membership now we've got heaps of free courses here um so yeah we've got like no, my site's too efficient so transform your finances access higher dimensions clear negative energy um all this kind of stuff. So transform your finances, access higher dimensions, um, clear negative energies and blockages. Yeah, and so there's quite a few free courses on this one here, you'll see. Manifest money, um, access higher dimensions. So yeah, look, that's just basically the DNI activation. So yeah, anyway, here's our link. So there you go, everyone. So anyway, thank you for coming and I'll see you all next time.